This is a brief presentation on interpreting ICU chest radiographs, specifically looking at lines. This follows our lecture on endotracheal tubes. This is our disclaimer. We'll be looking at four main types of lines here. Central venous catheters, perfectly in inserted central catheters, or PICs, as they're commonly known as, and the GI tubes, which are the Dobhovs and the nasogastric tubes. The main thing you got to know about lines is which one you're looking at, and which type of line, and then where it is supposed to be coming from and where it's supposed to be going. So the central venous catheters and the PIC lines, they're used to deliver medication. They're often used for medications that would be dangerous or damaging to the peripheral blood vessels if you just used a normal IV and they're also used for giving parental nutrition or TPN and then um, they may be used to monitor central venous pressure and the chest x-ray is really going to be just looking for the position of the line make sure it's in the right place and make sure there aren't any complications with insertion for the GI tract tubes pretty simple there's a tube to put food through or to suck uh, GI contents out um, and again, it's basically just recognizing that you're looking at a GI tube and that you know where it's supposed to be going and what it's supposed to be doing. And we'll quickly review the pertinent anatomy just to kind of understand where the tubes and lines are and where you'll be looking for them on the chest films. For the peripherally inserted catheters, the PICs, and the centrally inserted catheters, we're talking about venous return to the heart because these lines will travel in a vein and head back towards the heart. And then for the GI tubes, we'll talk about the esophagus and the stomach because that's primarily where we're dealing with them. For the catheters, oftentimes we'll insert a central catheter in the internal jugular vein. That's highlighted here. And the arrow's pointing at the right internal jugular vein. Of course, just for a review, the external jugular vein is lateral to that. So when the catheter is placed in the internal jugular vein, it then follows the course down through the no innominate or brachiocephalic and into the superior vena cava and then preferably the catheter tip will terminate at the cavoatrial junction which is highlighted here that's just where the superior vena cava and the right atrium join. And if you're talking about a pick obviously it's peripherally inserted and uh, this arrow is pointing at the axillary vein which uh, goes to join and become the brachiocephalic or innominate vein and of course into the superior vena cava. For the GI tubes, pretty simple here. Here's the esophagus and the stomach and uh, we'll be looking on radiographs to see the stomach on the left side below the hemidiaphragm and often people talk about the stomach bubble uh, which is highlighted here. And that is often the landmark you'll use just to be assured that the GI tube is terminating uh, in the stomach. So our first example is of a central line and basically you're going to want to be able to say that this is a central line that you see. It's coming from the proximate location of the internal jugular vein and looks to be terminating in the cavoatrial junction. Uh, you'd want to look for any iatrogenic processes, so starting in the neck, you'd think about looking for subcutaneous air, which would be linear or streaky hypodensities, indicating air in the soft tissue. You'd also want to make sure that there was no pneumothorax, so you might see the lung markings, interstitial markings, not making it all the way out to the periphery. And so you'd see some hypodensity uh, expanding pleural space as the lung uh, shrinks back. We don't see that here. You also would want to make sure that you don't see uh, signs that the superior vena cava or the normous, uh, brachiocephalic vein had been punctured. Uh, you might see an expanding mediastinum if that were the case where blood would be filling the mediastinum from the iatrogenic wound. You also make sure that the tip uh, doesn't go too far into the heart because it can introduce arrhythmias. Um, so you, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to see the term and we want to see the tip terminate at the cavoatrial junction. Another reason for that is because uh, there are ports on the on the line, and by making sure the tip terminates at the cavoatrial junction, you're ensuring that the 
uh, all of the ports are beyond the last of the valves in the venous system. Here's a good example of a pick that's been placed. Again, on the right side, we can see it coming from the peripheral venous system. It's going through the axillary vein and going through the brachiocephalic down into the super, superior vena cava and then terminating at the caveoatrial junction. Uh, we notice again that this line is thinner than central lines, uh, which makes sense because it has to go through the peripheral veins, which have a more narrow lumen. Uh, similar things you'd be looking for on a pick. You just want to make sure that it's in the right place. You know what the line is. You don't see any iatrogenic processes. This is a busy chest radiograph. This patient has chest tube. You have drains placed. There's sternotomy wires. Um, there's also this peripheral or the pulmonary artery catheter being used to measure pulmonary wedge pressures. It's going to give an idea of uh, volume status and cardiac versus pulmonary edema. Now uh, you can see this line coming from the internal jugular and it travels down uh, through the superior vena cava into the right ventricle and up to the pulmonary artery, the main pulmonary artery. I'm going to make sure of course the other iatrogenic processes that we mentioned earlier, subcutaneous air in the neck, pneumothorax, and expanding mediastinum. And then when you have a pulmonary artery catheter, you want to make sure that the tip uh, doesn't extend too far into the pulmonary vasculature. It can cause an infarct of the lung tissue if it's too far. Or if the balloon is inflated too long, you may see consolidation, which indicates infarct or ischemia of the lung. In that case, you want to alert the clinician, and the line should be pulled back. The first of our GI tubes that we'll look at, the NG tube here. This patient also has an ET tube placed, but you can see that the NG tube continues past where the ET tube terminates. It's highlighted here by the yellow arrow, and the NG tube continues on and overlies the gastric bubble. This confirms for us that the tube is not in the lung. You know, one of the feared complications of placing an NG tube is that the tube would terminate in the lung. Uh, the tube could not be confirmed by chest x-ray. You could be in feeding and then fill up somebody's lung with parenteral nutrition. In this case we can say that the line is in the stomach and it's cleared to be used. We also want to make sure that the tip is at least 10 centimeters beyond the gastroesophageal junction and that's to ensure that the last of the ports on the NG tube are in the stomach and not in the esophagus. The other GI tube here, the Dobhoff, looks a little different. It's a little thicker in appearance and it also has that heavy weighted tip that's radio opaque. But again, very similar in your approach. You just want to make sure that the tube overlies the stomach or the approximate location of the stomach if you can't visualize it, ensuring that it's not in the lungs. Let's do some practice cases now. So this patient was an 83-year-old male who was admitted for a GI bleed and a right IJ was placed uh, for transfusion. You can see what appears to be a right IJ catheter here, um, not following the course back to the heart, but instead seems to follow the uh, venous system peripherally. So this catheter would have to be uh, replaced. This patient is a 74-year-old female who was admitted for bacteremia secondary to a foot ulcer, past medical history of diabetes. A pick was placed and then a chest x-ray was taken to verify position. So if you didn't know that a pick had been placed, you'd want to be able to see this line and realize that it's thinner than a central catheter and that it's uh, coming from further in the periphery, so it's probably not a central line placed in the internal jugular, but rather a pick uh, placed peripherally and thread, threaded towards the heart. Unfortunately, in this case, this pick deflected up into the right IJ. 
So of course this pick would have to be replaced as well. This is a 22 year old male admitted for metastatic testicular cancer. A pick was placed and uh, later that day or a few hours after placement he began having PVCs. He did not have a history of PVCs. On the chest film we can see the tip terminating beyond the cavoatrial junction so it was recommended that the pick be pulled back and that's what we see on this chest film. The tip now is in the more approximate position of the cavoatrial junction and the PVC is resolved. So this is a case of an arrhythmia being caused by placement of a pick. This is an interesting case. Uh, again another busy a chest film, but what I want to point out is this catheter. This is a Swan's or pulmonary artery catheter that's been placed on the left side. We can see it enter uh, into the superior vena cava, perhaps the right atrium, and we can see it through this loop and then come back out. And it seems to terminate in the lung field, and it's kind of hard to imagine how that would happen, uh, but this is actually an example of the uh, left upper lobe having an, an anomalous uh, pulmonary drain and it drains directly into the brachiocephalic uh, explaining the course. This is a 65 year old male. He has an uh, enteric tube that's been placed and the chest film has been ordered to evaluate its positioning. And it's kind of hard to see on this display but the NG tube terminates here. Of course in this position you would recommend advancement. After advancing the, t the tube, another chest x-ray was taken. We can see the line in the stomach bubble now with the tip terminating at least 10 centimeters beyond the gastroesophageal junction. This is a 17 year old gentleman who had an NG tube placed. We can see it here overlying the esophagus and the trachea. Uh, we're reassured that it goes uh, beyond the airway and appears to be in the stomach bubble and then we see it continue up back above the diaphragm so this was actually found to be in the patient's hiatal hernia. This is a chest x-ray that should make you feel uh, really nervous about not getting a chest film when you place either an NG tube or a Dobhoff. Of course we can see a Dobhoff here and it seems to overlie uh, the esophagus, the, sorry, the trachea. Um, we can't really see the esophagus, can't confirm that it's in one or the other until uh, we see the tip terminate in the lung field. You would definitely not want to use this tube for a feed. It could be uh, catastrophic, and I hope that uh, this kind of scares you so that anytime you ever place a Dobhoffer NG tube, you have to see the chest film before you start the feed. This film is similar to the previous. We can see a Dobhoff tip here terminating, uh, overlying the mediastinum. It doesn't appear to be in the airway, but we can't be sure, so we would advance, we would recommend advancing uh, this line. The Dobhoff was advanced, and again we can see the tip. It doesn't appear to overlie an airway. It's probably in the esophagus heading into the stomach, but we can't be sure. Again, we want to see the tip probably 10 centimeters beyond the most likely location of the esophageal gastric junction. And with the third chest film we confirm that the Dobhoff is in the stomach and we can begin feeds. So again for lines when you're looking at them on chest films in the ICU you basically want to be able to verify what type of line it is and you want to know where it should be headed and you want to know what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, you would also want to rule out iatrogenic complications those were the subcutaneous emphysema if you're replacing a central line uh, you would want to make sure that it, you don't have a pneumothorax or any signs of hemorrhage. You can see that with this expanding hematoma. And you want to make sure things like Dobhoffs and NG tubes aren't terminating in the lung fields because, it, again, it can be disastrous to start a feed when the tube is in the airway.